Reading again from Matthias Quad's 1617 publication. Utriusque cosmi maioris gilicit et minoris metaphysica, physica atque technica, historia, in duo volumina, secundum cosmi differentiam divisa. By Robert Flood. The first tome, which is on the history of the greater cosmos, the macrocosmi, divided into two tractates, of which the first is concerning uh, book one of tractate one of tome one is on metaphysico macrocosmi et creaturanum ilius ortu, which is like the metaphysics of our greater cosmos and the subsequent creation of this realm, which we inhabit and then the second part of the first book is uh, Physico Macrocosmi in Generatione et Corruptione pro Progressu, the, the physics of the macrocosmos, which come from and after, subsequent to the metaphysics. And as a consequence of these physics, um, the falling of things from generation into corruption et corruptione progressu. In modern parlance, we would call that um, entropy, right? Entropy in the universe. And then his second, um, second tractate is concerning the natural arts, or the liberal arts, which he calls the nat arte naturae simia, the, the monkey arts. These are what man as simia have um, developed for mankind, humankind, that is. Namely, arithmetic, music, geometry, the art of perspective, picture drawing, the military arts, scientia motus et temporis, the knowledge of motion and of time, cosmography, astrology, and geomancy. And I just wanted to scroll down and show a bit more on the title page because there are very interesting illustrations throughout this massive tome. And yes, the PDF is over a thousand pages long. We have Pan, or Faunus, here, who I think is serving Saturn, or Kronos, in this image, based on his headgear, unwinding a massive pulley to put into motion this depiction of the macrocosmos, which is the universe out there, and a human being as a depiction of the microcosmos, or the universe within. And the symbolism of the pentagram always has stood for, uh, symbolic for the microcosmos, meaning within man. And so that's the point there. And then you've got the planetary symbols, right? The planetary spheres, the moon, that's Venus, or excuse me, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Then outside of that, the celestial sphere of the stars. And within the microcosmos, of man, we have a depiction of, again, the planetary spheres, and also the 12 signs of the zodiac, with some lines of correspondence drawn between them. And then, cholera sanguis pituita. Interesting, those inner spheres having to do with the bodily humors. In the, the school of uh, Paracelsus, I believe. Robert Flood was a Paracelsiac <laughs> physician, you could say. All right, well, let's get to what I intend to read here. Let's look at the index for the first... Oops, I don't want to look at the index. I want to look at the table of contents. 
these old tables of contents in the late medieval Latin uh, manuscripts are supposed to be read like a continuous paragraph or a, a run-on sentence as you work through it. So it's a roadmap of what's about to be included. At macrocosmi et ex stentium in eo creaturarum fabricam universum in alem duo requiriuntur. Two things to be considered about the fabric of the overall universe making up the macrocosmos. That which is called natura, nature, so, so causa, well, principium de quo liber unum est quae. The first book concerning nature and then naturatum, which is like things created from nature, naturally. Which have or which are caused by nature, or which have their initial creation, their principles within nature, which is considered in subsequent books. The first book concerning nature, divided into two parts, in creatum, uncreated nature, quod est ipse Deus ratione, quius suae creationis. Deus, the Judeo-Christian um, god, who is said to be the creator, the opifex, and the ens entium. That is the, the, the OG creator, and then the opifex, which is like the constructor or the architect of the universe. And then the ens entium, the, the seed the, the seed of original causes, entium, is like of existence. And then after nature is created is infinita in naturans. And then here it gets to what's included in his initial chapters of the books. So the first book which I will or the first chapter uh, omnipotens essentia de scribitur. The second chapter concerning locus place in which creation took place, and then uh, about the creation itself, drawing heavily from the works of uh, Hermes or Mer Mercury Trismegistus, as well as the book of Genesis, as well as Plato, and I think Ovid's Metamorphoses a bit as well. All of those Books, subjects, kind of say all the same thing. They're all connected. So the first order of creation, the primarium, contains what is called in Greek hyle or shille, which is like the primordial stuff that creation was made out of coming from the most ancient composition of things, which, if it did not follow from, then there would not have been anything created. Which uh, chapters 3, 4, and 5 are concerning. And then from the hyle, the primordial stuff, came lux, fiat lux, which brought form to generations of unformed things, of which is written chapter 6. The second order of creation in nature by the Godhead, the second order, secundarium quod dubiditur in naturam, considers um, qualities of the created nature from Hille, which are brought by light, namely Caliditatis et frigitatis, heat and cold. From which, ex quibus de, can't quite read that, de, sec, de secidit natura. From which qualities, caliditatus et frigitatus, are cut, de sigit, nature is cut or categorized into things of humiditatu and sicitatus 
right? Humidity and dryness. And about these topics are included in chapter 7. The third order of nature, tertianum a secundariorum actionibus ortum. This word ortum I like to translate as like realm uh, that we occupy. In quator differentias divisum, quas elementa vocan scilicit. These are the four elements of the ancient peoples, right? Ignem, aerem, aquam, terram. Fire, air, water, and earth. These elements are based out of the properties of dryness and wetness and heat and coldness, which come from combinations of hylle and lux. Of the four elements, ex quibus immensa macrocosmi substantia conflator. This is included in chapter 9. The fourth order of nature, quod est immensum illud, chaos ex naturis diversus indegiste compositum. Hmm. Chaotic order of things, included in chapter 10. And then the final order, ultimum sail extremum aut proximum quod est. Ah, oh, these are the things we see around us in animalibus, in vegetabilibus, et in mineralibus, including sperma. We know what that is. Semen. This term semen meant the the you know the sexual seed of both um, males and females. So it it referred to both um, both dualities there. And then within in, minera, in mineralibus we have sulfur sulfur and argentum vivium like living silver. Not quite sure what that means. Perhaps quick silver. Perhaps this really means mercury. That's what I think. And that is also included in chapter 10. So today, as I sit and make this recording, my goal is to um, read chapters 1 through 4, at least, which... Um, quote many ancient philosophers as well as the judeo-christian genesis creation uh, mythos and everything interrelates so that's my goal in the reading today and those videos will follow beginning with chapter one <laughs>